Hi everyone, welcome to another craft tutorial. Today I'm going to show you five ways to tint embossing paste. Uh, also, I will put the card together at, towards the end of the video. Uh, I'm using Vendivici embossing paste and as a little disclaimer, the embossing paste says that I should use water-based uh, tinting mediums, but the inks are alcohol-based. It did work with the embossing, this specific embossing paste, uh, the two tries I did. Uh, however, if you have any other kind of texture pastes, uh, I would recommend try it on something separate before you go into your main project. So uh, I put around four drops of the alcohol ink, Ranger alcohol ink in the color of mermaid into a little bit of embossing paste. Then I'm taping down this little rectangle that is four by two and three quarters cut with a MFT stacks uh, rectangle die. Everything is linked in the description down below. Uh, the paper I'm using is watercolor paper, which is Canson Montewall, and then I'm using a stencil from Simon's Stamp. The tape I'm using, this beautiful pink one, is by Tisa and is a sensitive one. So it will be very, very nice to your papers. I really love it. It worked perfectly. I take this little palette knife and then I'm just smear it on, on a little bit of an angle to be able to kind of cover the whole surface. When I've smeared it off, I'm very quickly removing the excess. Maybe I could have used it for another project, but I just take a little paper and wipe it off. I also take a uh, wipe off the excess from the palette, but then I ran, run out to my kitchen in between everything and wash both the stencil and the palette knife that I used off with lukewarm water. Um, otherwise, it will get stuck in your stencil and you won't get that clear, beautiful uh, mark. Then carefully remove the tape um, because if it dries, I don't know how it would work. And I put it off into a corner to dry. And this was the result of that after it dried. Then we're going in with the second medium, which is an alcohol ink, but I kind of wanted to count it as a second one because it is the pearl alcohol ink. And I am uh, putting the paper down before I do the mixing. And I did that for the rest of them because uh, then I didn't have to worry for the embossing paste to actually dry before I got it onto the stencil. So I taped everything down, line up the stencil as I wanted, and then I'm mixing. Taking a little splotch of the embossing paste, you actually don't need that much. And then I'm gonna go in with the Sublime Alcohol Pearl by Ranger and Tim Holtz. I'm shaking it up very, very thoroughly so I get all the mica. Um, and we're gonna come to that in a second. I'm doing a couple of drops of it and then I'm starting to mix it. What I figured out here is that I think it is the mica that's actually kind of balling up on itself into the, um, into the paste. So I get these tiny, tiny dark granules in the hole. And I really love how it ended up, but it was probably not what I was after. But I love, I think it's gorgeous, but uh, it did kind of break out to so get those little dark green granules in the lime green embossing paste. So, um, and then I just removing all the tape. I really love this, this last thing, removing the tape and the, um, um, and the stencil and just burying what you had. And by the way, I've already been and washed the uh, stencil, you know, magic of editing. And this is the result. And I will say the pearl did not show up at all. So it was a waste of a pearl product, but I really love the results anyhow. Now for the third medium, I'm going to use some watercolor in, in a tube form. The one I have is the Windsor & Newton Professional and I picked it up, picked this up in like a sale bin in my local grocery store. So I paid around $5 for it. I know it's quite expensive, but you use teeny, 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 tiny amounts. So you can probably keep it for years. Um, 
I really love how it blends. I think of all the things, the alcohol inks and the watercolor was the easiest to blend in. This just, it, it just blended smoothly. And I have a ma magenta one, a cobalt magenta one that I really want to try uh, later on because I really, really like the effect of this. Um, you got it, it was very, very smooth and um, I really like the color. And because I'm using a white embossing paste, everything will be a little bit lighter. And depending on how much you actually put in, in the different colors, you will get a deeper or lighter color. Um, and that is the, the white in the embossing powder will help with that a lot. A lot of mine now kind of turned a little bit pastel-y looking out, but I kind of like the backgrounds. They were fun to make. For my fourth medium, I'm actually going to do two takes of this. We're going to start with this one. I'm taking a, a little craft knife and I'm cutting off a little bit from the tube here. And then I'm going to mix this into the gelato directly. I call this a dry blend of the gelatos. It's a blue gelato and my packaging didn't have any numbers or anything. It's just a blue tube, so I don't know which color, but I'm gonna try to find it and put it as a link in the description down below if I can. Uh, mine comes from a set, I think, um, of multiple gelato tubes. I wanted to try gelato. Not sure that it is my kind of medium, but I did enjoy adding it to this. So I'm, I'm trying to get those granules to mix and honestly, after a while I've started to get a little bit tired in my hand and I gave up. That was, yeah, honestly, I gave up. I was like, I'm not doing this anymore because it was so intensive. You see here, I'm trying new techniques because my my wrist is just not playing game. So in the end, I actually decided that, well, let's just have it like this. Let's keep the granules. I, again, I really loved the granules, both with the pearl alcohol ink and this. These granules give the whole background a more texture, more dimension, and I really liked it. Um, so yeah, I was, I got a little bit bored after that. So doing it with uh, the dry blend, it is harder to blend it into the gelato or into the um, embossing powder. Uh, I must say that the gelato was, um, it did break down into, with a lot of color, but not as much as I would have hoped. So I decided to make this uh, as extra, a bonus, because this is still just a fourth. I have a fifth at the end of this. So I thought that, well, I have to try this for a second time. But this time I sprayed a little bit of water directly into the gelato. And then I use the uh, little blend knife to um, to blend it together. Um, so I hacked, hacked it down a little bit with the um, spatula, is that the word? Yeah, I just forgot what it's called. Anyhow, uh, I blend it into water uh, and kind of mix it very much more um, scented. It was much easier to get it to become this kind of creamy texture. It still have a little bit of granules left. And I think that's because again, oh, good word. <laughs> I like these kind of, of techniques, but I like things going fast. Uh, I think that is one of the reasons why I love a Copic coloring so much. Even though I can sit and color for like two hours, uh, it's still a faster medium to color one of the bigger pictures that takes two to two hour, two to two and a half hours for me to color with Copics. It would probably take me eight, nine, 20 hours to do with like pencils and watercolor. So I prefer, really, really prefer to use the, the Copics for things like that. Yeah. When I felt that I had gotten the creaminess that I could get out of that gelato, um, I mixed it, 
the creaminess into my embossing paste. And I think this was the most potent color that I got out of all of them. Uh, I could have gotten much more potent colors uh, out of all, all of them also if I had added more color. Um, but I think this was the most I got out of the least medium, sort of, if that makes sense. Still have a little bit of those granules and textures, but uh, I kind of like it anyhow. Yeah. I really loved making these backgrounds and I really love making videos like this for you where you can see multiple ways and multiple mediums to use. Like I have so many stuff right now and now I just want to use them. And here is the kind of finished background assay card. Uh, and for the fifth medium, we are going to use some Mika spray by Nuvo um, tonic products. Uh, I got this in a haul, which probably will come up a little bit later this week on this channel. Um, and I picked it up uh, and I thought, well, first we're going to try it here on the the embossing paste. So I do, I think I ended up doing about 10 drops of, of it because I felt that it didn't have that much of a dye in it, that much color. I just really wanted to see if it would give you any kind of like glitter metallic effect. And I'm, I'm sad to say that it really doesn't. I think it is a combination of that I'm using a white embossing paste and that uh, it the embossing paste I have has a kind of a matte texture. So none of the Mika is actually showing up on this card. I, it just got a little bit of a gray tint. However, I did like the background. <laughs> Um, so yeah, these are the the six backgrounds I got from the five different tints. And yes, I did count the two different alcohol inks as different because one has a lot of mica in it and one hasn't. And that's just that just um, a big difference actually. I, I felt it was a big difference. I'm trying to find my my or pick up carefully my um, number six there but yeah these were the backgrounds so um i made six cards but i made them the same way so i thought i'd go through how i made the kind of card simply so first what i did i cut um three eighth of an inch strips uh, out of some summer splash cardstock it is summer so this these colors summer splash and and tropical teal which I picked up from my favorite things. They are just gorgeous and perfect for summer cards. And I thought it would kind of match with all of the different backgrounds that I had. So I cut all of them down to be four and a quarter because the cards that the card bases that I made are all four and a quarter by, I think they're four and a quarter by three inches. So they're six inches by four and a quarter and then cut in half. Um, and that is to measure up with the, um, with the backgrounds. Then I'm using some um, VersaFine Onyx Black for the sentiment. I tried with another ink, but I think I need to pick up some good kind of sentiment stamping inks. I have a lot of, of play inks, but not so much for sentiments. I kind of I have to go on a little scour, figure out where I can find really good ones. But this is the VersaFine Onyx Black. I really like the color. F then I'm going to do some Copic coloring and I'm going to do six whales and six little bandages from a lawn fawn set. So I'm doing them in London fog because I want to do them a little bit like no line or kind of just a little bit of line sort of uh, coloring. I'm really liking the softness of it and I thought the softness would work good with the lightness of the cards. So I'm starting off with the whale. I'm using a combination of B21, B24 and B32 as my Copic 
markers um, starting with a shadow on the bottom and on the left and then I'm kind of blending that shadow out with the B32 and then I'm going with the B21 again. B21 is such a light color so I prefer to do it two layers and that is why I started off first once. Then I did E40, E41 and E42 for the little hat and then I colored in the little thermometer uh, first with the TNs and then the teeth and then I just added a little bit of the red color uh, R35 to give that little red thing and after coloring everything I decided I wanted to add some dots to that little character so I added a whole bunch of dots to them after I finished that I'm doing the card I'm adding the little um, background on the card bases Again, they are four and a quarter by three inches, giving an about eight of an inch uh, of a border. Here I figured out that it was a little bit uh, crooked, so I actually went in uh, on another card base. And then I'm going to put this on that card base. Th that's also a tip if you're getting things down a little bit crooked, maybe switch the card base out and uh, try again. After I put on all the backgrounds, I'm going to add some foam tape um, onto the back of all of the sentiments. Um, this is how I do my uh, kind of lineup. I do everything one step for everything and then I do one step for the next thing. So here I'm going to go in and add all the little strips across um, measures from or back to the edges of the card base and then I'm using some tape to add my little whale and some glue to add those little bandage bandage and then I actually finished all of the cards um, I really wanted to have a whole bunch of get well soon cards so um, I thought this would be a perfect time to make those so here I go through all of them with all of the different backgrounds I had a lot of fun and I really liked how they turned out I hope you liked them too if you do please thumbs it up it means a lot to me if you have any questions just comment down below and down below in the description you can find all the details and all the materials that I used if you want to see more videos like this just hit that subscribe button and thank you again for watching and I'll see you later bye